Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I have another another returning guest for you today. This is another one of my favorites, Lori Irvine. Lori is an expert in professional empowerment. She motivates teams to maximize their capacity for excellence. She inspires by supporting clients in the discovery of their true potential. Lori enjoys meeting new people, of course, and is fascinated by their uniqueness. She's open-minded and passionate about helping individuals to identify and enhance their strengths. Lori, it's really great to have you back on. Thank you so much for coming back on the podcast so we can converse some more. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. So you are, you're one of the sharpest cookies I've had a chance to talk to. I say sharp cookie. I mean that like you're one of the sharpest knives in the drawer that I've got a chance to talk to for this podcast. And so I love, I'd love to get your, your thoughts, your opinions, your experiences on, let me see how I want to phrase this. We have a dynamic set of tools for communication now in 2023. We've had it for years now, especially as we've transitioned or moved through whatever COVID's at right now, or the pandemic is right now. And so we have like the tool we're using right now, Zoom, to be able to connect and talk and really like, you know, record a podcast, but also get to know each other better. Obviously in person is always going to be in person, but it has its own challenges, you know, pandemics and sicknesses aside. Telephones have existed for a very long time, but the way we use them has evolved quite a bit. Lots of people will never pick up the phone if you call them, no matter what the circumstance is. They'll demand that you not leave a message and you have to text them. So all that said, talk a little bit about what your experience is and what your thoughts are on our communication tools for, for coaching in particular within the context of coaching and in business today and how you how you use those tools and how you think they can be used maybe even better. So uh, communication for sure has to happen. And, and depending on whether or not you're able to do it in person, number one is in person. Mm -hmm. So impact with respect to impact, number one would be effective for effectiveness would be in person because there's body language. There's other things that you can distract from communication in person different than you would from any other form of communication. Secondary Zoom would be the second way to go, and that would be because you still have a bit of the body language. You, you can see a little bit more of eye contact, those kind of things. And then the last one, obviously, would be through other kind of communication. But frankly, the best way to be able to communicate and, and the best way that you can do that would be in person, secondarily with Zoom. Now that we've moved on a little bit more from the COVID protocols, I think it's a really good idea to switch. And a lot of people are kind of stuck in the sense that, well, during COVID, we did it this way. During COVID, we kind of stopped our meetings. Those kind of things are the things that are red flags to me with respect to coaching uh, teams is, yeah, we did that for a while, but now we've moved on. So how are we going to get back to what we used to do when we used to meet? How do we get back to meeting in person? Those kind of things are some of the things that are a struggle with change management right now. Mm. So I say, let's let's go back to what we used to do, because we know that that used to work. And what we did before and during COVID was what we had to do in order to be able to bridge the gap, which was Zoom calls, phone calls, whatever. Right now, mm. I think it's more let's get back to where we used to be. And it's funny, too, because a lot of people will... They'll, they'll look at what we were doing in this, as this bri bridging the gap, as what we were doing to try to get through the gap that was COVID-19, the pandemic and the lockdowns and all that stuff. But what I think too few people do, well, too few, still plenty, but I think more and more people are doing and should be encouraged to do is to look at this as not a chance to replace some old model with something new, but to look back at what we were doing and look to improve it based on the lessons we've learned. You know, you don't have to just, throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Although that might not be the best metaphor. It's one I like to use a lot because you're throwing babies is like, whoa, don't do that. But we have so much, we have so much extra perspective, I think, that we did not have before the pandemic about what the value of the in-person communication is, what the potency of the in-the-room moments, the brainstorms, the moments of serendipity, the inspiration, the creativity that can flow, that can really only come from that kind of interaction. And I feel like there's there's a real opportunity here to look at the way that we did things before and learn to not just value them for what they were, but also improve upon them while re-embracing them now on the other side of what we just went through with you know forced remote and use the tools that we have at our disposal not to replace 
an old way, but to enhance it and to grow it. I, I like that you use the term change management. I think that's a very that's a very important. I think it's a very important concept for people to keep in mind. So our change managing the change that is going to come, whether you like it or not, whether you're ready for it or not, and really just look for improvement rather than replacement. Is that is that vibe with you? Is that am I picking up what you're putting down? <laughs> Absolutely. I think then during COVID, I think a lot of people started to get a real feel for what how how to appreciate and how to understand and bring value to what are some of the things that we have in place that we lost for the, that time. So a, a lot of times when I work with teams and they talk about the morning huddle or the daily strategy meeting, but, you know, what is it that we get from that? Why is that important to us? Right? So what brings more importance to that is knowing when it's gone, what does it look like when it's gone? What is the outcome when it's gone? There's things missing. There's a missing communication. There's missing. We don't understand what's going on day to day. We don't really have a vibe on what what the day looks like. It takes away from managing the stress in the day. So while during COVID, when we take away the systems that we had in place before, it's a true appreciation of, wow, when those things are missing, this is the kind of things that were the fallout of coming back from this and not being able to manage those systems. And what are some of the things that made our day a little bit more stressful? What are some of the things that got in the way, right? Yeah. So it's, it was a true appreciation of, wow, these are why these systems are in place. This is why this is important to us. This is why we should continue them. So in a way, the, the, the experience of COVID was we can't do it now, but we need to bring it back. So why is it that it's important ended up being like a point for discussion as to this is why we do these things. And most adults understand things and want to do things and are more motivated to do things according to why does it make sense to us? How does that make a difference in my day? What is it, what's in it for me, right? To be able to put this process forward. Yeah. So in the sense of communication, a lot has happened with respect to before and after what was available with COVID. And that is, we just need to talk to our people. We need to, to speak to one another. We need to be more comfortable in speaking with one another. And that's a whole nother ball game, <laughs> but we need to speak to each other in a way that we need to do what we can, what's best it, because it's in everybody's interest to make the day go as smooth as we can with what we have in our resources and what we know in our schedule. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just like an invitation to, I, I'm, I, I, for whatever reason, I think I well, for whatever reason, I think it, it kind of it kind of vibes with what we're talking about here. But the that classic line, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And it's like it's it's kind of a cousin to I'm thinking about how it's like, well, we had this thing and we were we were doing things a certain way. And I think a lot of us were doing them, they were we were doing them the way we were doing them unconsciously, even as they were giving us the value that we needed and they were carrying us forward. It was a structure that was carrying a lot of weight. We weren't very aware of the value or aware of the potential and the pitfalls. And also you know, going along with that, we weren't talking about them. We weren't conversing about them. And so now we've had this, this gap that we've bridged and we're looking now, we're like, okay, now I got to think about why were we doing it that way? Why are, why should we do it that way now? How should we, how can we evolve that to be even better than it was before? And that's, that's sparking and provoking conversations like that. It's like, oh, okay. Now I understand more about why I'm doubly excited to go, to go back to this particular way of things, because now it's like, I've seen life without it. I've seen life without the morning huddles or without the, you know, the, the creativity of the group. I've seen life without those structures. And I, I realized now how much weight they were carrying, how much, how much weight, how much structure they were supporting. It's like, okay, now I know my why. And I'm being supported by those structures. Let's go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting like almost excited thinking about it. I'm like imagining the conversations I'm having with people and getting excited about their excitement and their understanding. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's important for people to understand the value of it. It's important that people understand what the why is. And if you look at Simon Sinek's book, The Power of Why, all those kind mm -hmm. of things, how, what, what is meaningful to me and with respect to why this is important with my day to day and acknowledging your team for this is important for all of us. And this is why, and this is what is, is going to be the outcome in the event that we are able to communicate in the best way that we can with the way that uh, is most impactful, which is in person, right? 
and to be able to dispel any kind of, you know, things that can happen moving forward and do a risk assessment on how we can manage the day in the best way that we can with the communication that we have in place moving forward and and to make it uh, a, a day that works best for everybody, right? Before I hit record, we were talking about how long this would go. And I was like, sometimes the conversation just kind of, there are so many different jumping off points. and But also sometimes the the conversation comes to a nice natural close. And I feel like I'm kind of torn because I have like a half dozen different ways I feel like we can carry the conversation. But also we've been chatting, we've been recording for a little over 10 minutes now. And I'm like, you just, you summed that up perfectly right there. And I was like, that's why that's why I wanted to sit there for a couple of seconds and let the silence rest. Because I was like, that was just, that was very well said, Lori. Do I want to go anywhere else with that? And so I'm thinking... You know what? I do have one one little addition I think I want to make to this, or maybe not addition, but something else I want, a different angle at which to look at this. So I'm wondering how how are you approaching these conversations in, in your coaching practice with people who are looking to – with people who are just – who are looking for how to conduct themselves professionally in 2023 and beyond? How are those conversations – I know it's really early in the year, but how are those conversations going for you right now in your in your in your coaching practice? So when we're talking about the, so let me just ask you this. So when yeah. you're talking about professionalism, are you talking about within the team or are you talking about with uh, customers? I think within the team is what I'm most, what I'm most interested in right now. Obviously they both, both, both of those have very fruitful paths to go down, but I'm thinking in particular because with, with the, the team dynamics. Okay. So if you're talking about like structured meetings. Yeah. I could talk about structured meetings and I could talk about sure. how you have to follow a structure because if you don't do it that way, then it's a little bit, I don't know how to say it. It, it, it If it's structured, then it's there's a little bit more accountability and all that kind of stuff. Do you want yes. me to go there? Yeah, it's a great word for you it. Want it to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you just bring it up. You're going to edit this, right? Well, I mean, I might leave this part in. <laughs> okay. All right. So most people find, okay, let me go with it. Okay. So most people find one of the things that I find that is very valuable to clients is something that they didn't have that they used to have before, that at least they thought that they had before. And that was a good structured way of communicating with their team. Hmm. Fortunately, a lot of people see that as something that's easy to do, but you have to put structure around that just like you would any other protocol or any other policy that you would with an organization because communication is a system just like any other system, whether it's to gauge productivity or gauge performance. A system for communication is just as important as anything else, and it deserves a structure that surrounds what it is and what it means and everybody has to understand how to follow through with that mm -hmm. typically a structure of communication deals with we need to make sure that that everybody that's involved in the conversation which is the team has a venue of communication so everybody has to understand when is the communication going to happen so first step is to make sure that everybody has a team meeting in place so that everybody knows that there's going to be a venue of communication to come. Hmm. Prior to the team meeting, it's important that everybody puts forth whatever they have as ideas or it, whether it's an idea, an innovation, or if it, it is an issue that needs to be discussed or problem solved within the meeting, hmm. that needs to be brought forth ahead of time. The reason it has to be brought forth ahead of time is because it gives everybody an opportunity to be able to think about and strategize ways to get through issues prior to the meeting. So they're all set up for the meeting before they even show up. When those things are in place, the meeting can happen and everybody's comfortable with what's going to be presented because they all know what it is ahead of time. They all have some ideas or solutions to bring forward to the meeting ahead of time. And they're able to come up with some kind of action or initiative or a conclusion or a resolve before, before the meeting even happens. And then they just talk it through within the meeting. What has to happen after that then is the follow-up. Uh, what are the action items? What are the things that we've decided according to the issues, the problems, the solutions? What are we going to do to make positive change? Those things have to be recorded within the SMART goals. Mm -hmm. So they have to have an end date. They have to have a who's going to do it, when's it going to be done by, right? So it has to have like a SMART goal. So it has to be specific, yeah. measurable, time-based, all those things. 
to make sure that when the next meeting happens, you can look back and say, wow, okay, so this is what we can acknowledge. This is what's been done so far. This is what still needs to be done. We're moving forward. So there's momentum. And that mm -hmm. is already positive recognition and positive reinforcement to move forward. Those things, even though they don't seem like they're systems, they are systems in order to move forward. It's uh, it's key to communication. Structured communication is way different than casual communication if you mm -hmm. want results. Mm -hmm. 100%. I, for whatever reason, I think this makes sense, but you, you don't really think of the rails of a train, the rails that a train runs on as a structure. You don't really think of them that way. They're just what the train runs on. But without those rails in place, the train's not going anywhere. You can you can you can you can put all the power in the world you've got, and it'll it'll grind its way slowly but surely nowhere. But with those rails, you can really go places. And I feel like that's I, I, that for me, that's exactly what you're talking about. I felt like I felt like I just locked into a rail, and I started just like gliding because it's like I think about meetings I go into like when I, and I love the the, the pre-structure that early structure for communication because when everybody knows what's on the table to be discussed it allows everyone to bring their best forward they have time to think to consider and to bring ideas to bring their own to put their own best foot forward because they have an idea of what's going to be discussed and what's going to be prioritized and what's going to be valued and so everybody's bringing their best because they've got the opportunity to bring their best. And then going through that, their structure to action things out and how to assign time and responsibilities. And so there's so much that doesn't have to be thought about because it's already been thought about. All that, all that structure stuff has already been carefully planned out and laid out so that everyone can bring their best to every stage of the process from conversation and communication through action into accomplishment and review. It's everything is laid out and everyone's able to do their best work. It, it excites me. It really excites me. Cause I, I, again, I feel my, like I, my body clicked into the rails and I'm just gliding forward with, with a little bit of power going a long way. 100%. And that's what the team feels. So if the team feels they're engaged in decision-making and the team feels that they are being recognized or acknowledged for what they're going to bring forward, it makes a whole difference in the amount of engagement and the employee satisfaction with respect to, oh, somebody's listening to me. Oh, people understand where I'm coming from, front line. Like those are the things are the gems. And a lot of times that gets ignored. And to have a venue of communication, to be able to tap into those things and to be able to get people involved to help with those things and to delegate certain tasks, it, it's a great way to provide synergy and to provide uh, a balance in uh, the load of, of what's important and to, and to gauge everybody into where do we want to move from here? We're all to, in, in this together in this company or in this organization. We all want to contribute to that. How do, how can we do that best? And, and what can you do to provide that? And just alone being able to, for, for people to understand that, yeah, we're listening to you and we, we understand where you're coming from and we're hearing you, that alone is acknowledgement. So I think, you know, when you with with respect to be able to bring this together as a team effort, and to bring this together with respect to acknowledgement and engagement in in a company, these are crucial things and opportunities that a lot of times are missed. Right? Absolutely. I am. I'm so glad. I asked that that follow up question, <laughs> Lori. Thank you. We've we've talked for almost a, over half an hour now. Thank you so much for coming back on. I I have I kind of have a lot to think about. I just I love like I said I I wasn't just blowing smoke up your butt. You were one of the sharpest knives I've got a chance to talk to, and I love the way that you structure your thought and your communication. It just it makes so much sense to me in ways that also gives me things to think about and and go further with. So yeah, thank you for who Thank you are you. What you're doing, for talking to me. This has been great. So yeah, yeah I'm, thanks for the I, I opportunity. May have, that may have you back on again. These conversations, they always go interesting directions that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm never quite sure where they're going to go, but I'm always happy with where they land. That's I could, I couldn't hope for anything more. So yeah, once again, thank you, Lori, for coming on. I really appreciate your time today. I appreciate it too. And to the audience out there, I, I hope, but secretly, I know that you got a lot out of this conversation. If you ever want to get to know Lori better, I mean, you can find her on her website. Go go to her LinkedIn profile. You can go you can go everywhere from her LinkedIn profile. She's she's there. She exists. She's lovely. She is smart, and she will make your business better. 
just by talking with her. I already feel more structured in my own like business dealings just for having spoken with her. So you've heard this whole, you heard this conversation, go back and listen to our first one. It's been a while since I have, I think we recorded like, you know, six, nine months ago, however long ago it was. Go back and listen to the first one too. It's just, it's just as good. So anyway, thank you for listening and we'll talk to you again very soon. <laughs>